This is CBS. In the news tonight, an Army National Guard unit based in Duluth may be called to serve in Operation Desert Shield. A prank bomb in downtown Duluth paralyzed business along part of Superior Street today. And an Oliver, Wisconsin man convicted of strangling his stepfather has now been sentenced. I'm Debbie Desmond. And I'm Darren Danielson. KDLH Evening Edition is next. KDLH TV, Duluth. News for the 90s, live from the Broadcast Center. This is Evening Edition with Darren Danielson. Debbie Desmond. Teresa Bryant. And Marsh Nelson. A Duluth National Guard unit is on alert tonight for possible duty in support of the U.S. Armed Forces Operation Desert Shield. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We'll have a live report from the Army National Guard in just a moment. But first, a bomb scare in downtown Duluth today called authorities to action this morning. The business district was paralyzed and parts of it evacuated. Kevin DiLorenzo has that story. Downtown Duluth looked like a ghost town after authorities closed the streets to traffic and evacuated the Midwest Federal Building. The uh, main thing now is we've got to get these skylocks cleared. Airport, clear and uh, secure from both sides. The action surrounded a Coke can that looked like it had been rigged into a bomb. They weren't able to x-ray uh, the device that was left on the uh, window ledge. Uh, and there was a note attached to it. And they weren't able to x-ray it. Uh, they didn't know what was in there. The device had been spotted by a bank employee who then contacted authorities. Officials became concerned after reading an attached warning on the can. The note said, uh, caution, hazardous may be to your, uh, hazardous uh, to your health. The scare put fear into the hearts of building employees. Delivery man came in and went kaboom. And I said, pardon me? He said, you don't know what's going on? And I said, no. He says, there's been a bomb threat here. Once the area was cleared, the can was blown up by a bomb squad. So it was harmless then. It appeared that way. Officials have now determined the contents of the Coke can to be nothing more than cellophane wrappers, cigarette butts, toothpicks, and some assorted change. For Evening Edition, Kevin DiLorenzo, KDLH News. Duluth detectives say they will continue to investigate the incident to determine who put the can there and for what reason. As we told you at the top of the newscast, the Persian Gulf crisis has just reached an Army National Guard unit in Duluth. The 109th Light Equipment Maintenance Company has been put on alert and is awaiting orders. Just moments ago, Guard officials met with reporters to talk about the status. And our Ryan Davenport joins us now from the National Guard base. Ryan, what have you learned about the situation there? Darren, just to recap and bring you up to date, Pentagon officials have placed the Duluth National Guard unit on official alert status for possible duty in support of Operation Desert Shield in the Persian Gulf. Just minutes ago, Brigadier General Eugene Andriotti made the announcement here at the Duluth base that the 109th Light Equipment Maintenance Company was selected for alert status. Now, that's the first Minnesota Army National Guard unit to be placed on that status. This 159-member unit specializes in the repair and maintenance of generators, refrigeration units, air conditioners, and a variety of electronic equipment. Andriotti says the alert status allows members to make necessary arrangements with employers and personal documents. First Lieutenant and Commander of the 109th, Kim Swanson, says the unit has more than a dozen tractor trailers filled with maintenance equipment uh, to be ready in case uh, the alert status is elevated to uh, an activation. That hasn't happened at this point. Andriotti says over the next week or so, the decision as to whether or not the unit will be activated will be made. If that happens, the unit will be transferred to Fort McCoy in Wisconsin for further briefings and readiness procedures. And finally, there, and unit commanders say the announcement is a source of pride for the entire unit, which has trained so hard for this moment. And we'll have more on this story at 10 o'clock. All right, very good. Thank you very much for the update, Ryan. In other news, Rick Allen Anderson, the 22-year-old convicted of murdering his stepfather, Oliver Carmen, in Oliver, Wisconsin, has now been sentenced to 18 years in prison. Today in Douglas County Court, Anderson's attorney, Tom yeah. Moran, made a final attempt to get his client's conviction reversed. And you, and since they found him not guilty of first degree, I'd ask that the court change the verdict of second degree to not guilty and um, set Mr. Anderson free today.
But Judge Joseph McDonald agreed with the jury's decision and handed Anderson a penalty two years short of the maximum for second-degree murder. Anderson will now be sent to the correctional facility in Dodge, Wisconsin. He'll be eligible for parole in three years. A 13-year-old superior girl is safely back home tonight after being abducted by two Minneapolis teenagers. Pine County authorities say one of the male suspects wanted to marry the young girl. The suspects were arrested after the van they were driving was stopped on Interstate 35 near Sandstone. The girl was found unharmed in the back of the van. Formal charges are pending against the two suspects. They're tonight being held in a Pine County jail. After a full two weeks, the defense and prosecution in the Ross Shepard murder trial in Carleton County have finally agreed on a jury. The 12-woman, three-man jury was decided upon only after the defense attorney used up all of his 15 strikes and the prosecutor used up eight of nine strikes. The county clerk of court says it's very unusual for the jury selection process to take so long. 21-year-old Ross Shepard is charged with first-degree murder in the beating death of his stepfather in August of last year. His trial is set to begin Monday morning at 8.30. A good number of downtown Duluth workers arrived a little late this morning, and this is why. A semi-trailer trying to turn onto Masaba Avenue from West First Street got itself into a bit of a predicament. The corner was too tight for the big rig, but impatient motorists didn't want to be delayed and used their horns to let that be known. The Whitehead Specialties truck from Monroe, Wisconsin went for it, jackknifed, and took out a traffic light. There were no injuries, but tempers were quite obviously running a little bit high. Still ahead on Evening Edition, Minnesota's seemingly endless supply of poplar trees may not be so endless after all. And Northland Republicans set up shop on Superior Street, right next door to the Democrats. For these stories and much more, stay with us. News for the 90s Evening Edition is brought to you in part by Hibbing Co-op Credit Union and Blandon Employees Credit Union. You know, sometimes I forget how much fun it is to play Monopoly. Maybe because it's a lot like life. Sometimes you have enough money, sometimes you need a lot more. They should have another card in this game entitled, Go Directly to Your Credit Union. I know from experience that a visit to your credit union can mean a loan to buy the things you need or just want as we go through this game of life. Actually, most of the folks who join a credit union do so because of the quick loan approval. Your credit union, a great way to get past go and possibly even end up on boardwalk. KDLH-TV, along with the Arrowhead Chapter of Credit Unions, invite you to a special Magical Night of the Ice Capades, Saturday, September 29th at 7.30 p.m. at the deck. And to show our support of your appreciation of the Ice Capades, KDLH-TV and the Arrowhead Chapter of Credit Unions will be giving away these sharp, neon-colored hip packs to the first 1,200 children 16 and under with a full paid admission. So don't miss the fun. Hip Pack Night at the Ice Capades, sponsored by KDLH-TV and the Arrowhead Chapter of Credit Unions, Saturday, September 29th, 7.30 p.m. at the deck. One of the most exciting sales of the year is going on right now at Montauban Motors in Grand Rapids. Hi, Felix Cromley here, Montauban Motors in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. You can own this Bronco 2 for as low as $250 a month. Stop in and see me today, I'll give you the details. Hi folks, Bud Stone at Montauban Motors. Right now during our 1990 closeout sale, you can own this Tempo GL 4-door for as little as $170 per month. Come and see me for details. Hurry into Montauban Motors 1990 closeout sale. Aspen trees are in abundance here in the Northland. Over the last 15 years, aspen wood has become one of the most popular for industrial purposes. But as our Stacy Scheibel reports tonight, if that trend continues, we may face a shortage. John Gephardt studies the timber industry in Minnesota. In a new report on the aspen tree supply here in the state, Gephardt finds there are viable ways to prevent a predicted shortage. As demand for aspen rises, price for aspen will also rise. As these rising prices occur, the use of other species, such as birch, basswood, pine, will become more economical for these industries to use. Businesses like Superwood in Duluth rely almost solely on aspen wood for their products. But Gephardt says as the demand and price increases, they'll be forced to look for alternative wood species, but must look cautiously. As you begin to use some of these other species, you've got to be careful of how you may alter the physical characteristics of the product you're making. So you can do some substitution, 
but as you do more and more substitution, you may alter your product where the marketplace won't buy it. Gephardt says the timber industry faces shortages of certain species in cycles. Fifteen years ago it was pine that was threatened. Now it's aspen, and he can only guess what will be next. Fifteen years from now, because I won't be retired yet, I'll probably be doing a study looking at a birch pulpwood shortage and trying to deal with an aspen surplus shortage. So uh, the thing that people have to keep in context, context is that when we, when we do supply and demand projections, we are trying to identify concerns that might be out there in the future. So Gephardt says although the aspen shortage does need to be addressed, the problem will most likely take care of itself. For Evening Edition, Stacy Scheibel, KDLH News. Nearly a half million dollar grant will be used to help clean up Lake Superior. The money has been given to the University of Minnesota to study airborne pollutants contaminating the Great Lakes. The Council of Great Lakes Governors established a $100 million Great Lakes Protection Fund last year with the goal of creating permanent state and local support for Great Lakes preservation. Today's money was presented as one of several first round grants in the project. The City of Superior will get a $100,000 boost to help fight its war on drugs. A federal grant has been awarded to the city to battle drug use in the public housing units. Officials say the funds will be used to hire an anti-drug program coordinator and off-duty police officers. Some will also be used to help evict people dealing and using drugs. In a funding application to the federal government, city officials said several apartments in the three superior projects are viewed as being drug residences, including one known as the city supply center. Minnesota Independent Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor Sharon Clark is in Duluth tonight describing what she calls a very successful meeting with President George Bush. Clark told Duluth reporters late this afternoon that the importance of non-metropolitan education to both the Grunseth administration and the president is underscored by the fact that the president spent twice the scheduled time with area educators than anyone else while here. Clark made her Duluth appearance at the IR's new downtown headquarters, which happens to be right next door to the Duluth DFL headquarters. We'll have more on that tonight at 10. And Teresa Bryant is taking some time off and Laura Novak filling in to let us know that hopefully it's going to be a great weekend. Well, it's going to be a chilly weekend. We <laughs> okay. may see some more sunshine by Sunday if we're lucky. I'll be right back with all of your current weather details as well as that chilly forecast right after this. Give your home a new look for fall during Menard's anniversary sale. Start with a fresh coat of Dutch Boy Dirt Fighter interior latex flat paint. It's washable and guaranteed for 10 years, just $9.79 a gallon. And add beauty to your bath with help from Artesian. Choose this white designer pedestal lab or this easy to install white tub surround. Now only $99. Give your home a new look and save at Menard's. Save big money at Menard's. Public notice. Sanju Two Harbors has just made a special purchase of 20 pre-owned 89 Oldsmobile Calais. That means right now, you can buy an 89 Calais for about half the cost of a new one. Choose from 20 89 Oldsmobile Calais loaded with air conditioning, power door locks, AM FM stereo, automatic transmission, and pay up to hundreds below book from $69.99 or just $137 a month. Get yours now at Sanju Two Harbors, where the cars are. Recently, we've experienced severe weather, and at KDLH-TV, our first concern is keeping you informed and safe. With that in mind, we are starting a new service. When severe weather has been forecast, check the upper right of your screen for the alert message. It will stay on the screen for as long as the watch or warning is in effect. We will update you on the weather at 5 and 10 minute intervals with added messages like these on your screen. Keeping you informed is what News for the 90s is all about, only on KDLH-TV. We had a fairly nice day today, quite a bit of sunshine this morning, and then quite a few afternoon clouds. As far as temperatures are concerned, still rather mild. Right now we've got 55 degrees at the airport, 60 at the harbor, 58 over in Superior. Winds moving out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Uh, the barometer holding steady for the time being at 30.25. We've got 53% humidity and mostly cloudy skies in the Twin Ports. Our high today, 59 degrees. That's up from our chilly over 
overnight low of 39. Records for September 28th include a high of 79 set in 1956 and our record low 22 back in 1942. Temperatures right now, though, let's take a look. 52 up in International Falls, already 48 in the Hibbing Grand Rapids area, 54 in Grand Marais, 57 in Brainerd, 57 also in St. Cloud, a little bit warmer down in the Twin Cities with 59 degrees, and a quick jump over to Wisconsin where they're seeing 60 degrees both in Eau Claire and in Green Bay, 57 down in Milwaukee. Quick look at the national picture now, and quite a few showers and thunderstorms are continuing down in the southeastern part of the United States this evening. Some of them, uh, some locally heavy storms down there. In fact, Newberry, Florida reported a tornado touchdown earlier this afternoon due to that system. Also, some showers and thunderstorms happening along the line of this cold front passing right through the central U.S. And not the same story out in the Pacific Northwest, though. Look at all of the sunshine out there. Nice dry weather today, unseasonably warm temperatures for that part of the country, with some cities reporting temperature readings in the 80s and the 90s this afternoon. As far as our region is concerned, what's going to be happening? Well, we've got a low-pressure trough on the way. That is going to bring us more clouds this evening, even more clouds tonight, a good chance for some precipitation, and temperatures will be dro uh, dropping off rather rapidly as soon as the sun sets this evening. Let's get to that forecast. First of all, on the Iron Range tonight, they can expect a 70% chance of rain, possibly mixed with some snow if it gets chilly enough. Overnight low in the middle to upper 30s. Tomorrow, 50% chance for some showers in the morning. Otherwise, mostly cloudy skies with a high in the middle to upper 40s. And that's about it. In northwestern Wisconsin tonight, they'll see a 30% chance for some showers. Another chilly low in the upper 30s to the lower 40s. And then tomorrow, a 40% chance for some more shower activity and an afternoon high around 50. In the Twin Ports tonight, we'll see cloudy skies with a 50% chance for some light rain. Overnight low in the upper 30s, north winds at 5 to 15. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 30% chance for some light rain in the morning. Otherwise, high near 50 tomorrow afternoon, that's not so bad. North winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. But tomorrow night, that's when things are going to get a little bit chilly for us, becoming mostly clear and cold, some scattered frost tomorrow night. Overnight low near 30. And then Sunday, mostly sunny, and we'll be warming up a little bit, too, with a high back up in the middle 50s. So, mm, that's cover what the tomatoes, it looks like. Huh? <laughs> cover those tomatoes. Tomorrow night, especially, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, scattered frost tomorrow night, a low near 30, so we're going to be getting down there. Oh, it's boy. chilly. Yes. Thanks a lot, Nora. You're welcome. <laughs> Still ahead in the news, a floating classroom helped give Duluth High School students a special biology lesson. But up next in sports, the Duluth Marshall Hilltoppers try to break a 35-game football losing streak. Marsh Nelson tells us how when we come back. Chemist Tire and Oil has the lowest tire prices in the area. That's a promise from me, Joe Chemist. I have over 5,000 tires in stock, tires for all type of vehicles, truck, tractor, industrial, and cars of any size. We also have batteries of all sizes, a complete service department, and home delivery of fuel oil. Our huge inventory guarantees the tire you want at the lowest price around. I'm Joe Chemis, and that's a promise. Northern Minnesota may be one of the coldest spots in the country, but... You can have a tropical paradise year-round from Orv's Kitchen and Bath Center in Virginia. Orv has a variety of different sizes and colors of the well-known Pearl Bath Whirlpool. Come in and see the customized water circulation and the sleek style and shape of each Whirlpool. Escape the coldest winter and enter paradise with a Pearl Bath Whirlpool from Orv's Kitchen and Bath in Virginia. Tonight Sports is brought to you by these fine Pabst Blue Ribbon distributors, Lehman Mercantile, Moose Lake Beverage, and Monich Distributing. The one and only Marsh Nelson joins us again. Mm -hmm. It's Friday. That means lots of football in the area tonight, oh, Marsh. Right. It's football, but uh, the big action is out in Boston where the big series of the year in the American League is underway tonight. Big game. You betcha. Toronto Blue Jays and Boston Red Sox open a three-game series at Fenway Park. With six games to go, the teams are all even, 84 wins and 72 losses. This from Boston. He is exciting as a playoff, any playoff, there's no doubt about that. But uh, uh, we just got to go in there relaxed and, and play our type of baseball, and that's uh, uh, loosey-goosey and, and uh, put the hits together and get the good pitching like we did tonight. And if we do that, we're going to win. 
and you'll see him tomorrow on CBS. The Minnesota Twins begin their final road series of the year tonight in Detroit, where Mr. Cecil Fielder has 49 home runs, the pitchers Alan Anderson and Jack Morris. Kansas City lost in California late last night, so the Twins are just one game out of sixth place. Milwaukee is at home with the New York Yankees tonight. Paul Molitor had surgery today for shoulder and uh, forearm problems. Of course, he's out for the year. In the National League, the Reds' magic number is two. In the West, the Padres are at Cincinnati, the Dodgers at San Francisco tonight. In the East, the Pirates' magic number is four. Pittsburgh will be at St. Louis, the Chicago Cubs at New York Mets. It's high school football day in the North Country. Two teams starved for victories. Esco 1-3 and, and Marshall 0-4 tangled this afternoon on the toppers field. Nothing, nothing after one quarter. Jesse Burliat scored for Esco in the uh, second quarter. And this fake punt set up the Marshall touchdown. It was 7-6 to six at the half. And uh, Brad uh, Roden, uh, number 39, did the big running. The touchdown goes to quarterback Dale Pollard. That's the way she ended. 7-6 to six, Esco over Marshall. A twin bill tonight at Public Schools Stadium and the Denfeld Hunters trailed the Moorhead Spud 7-6 in the second quarter of the first game. Quarterback Brett Larson got the touchdown for the Hunters and it was running back Eric Robideau scoring the Moorhead touchdown 7-6 for the Spuds in the second quarter. The afterpiece there at 8 o'clock, unbeaten Superior Senior and Duluth Central. Now, among other act attractions tonight, it will be Virginia playing at Two Harbors, Greenway and Hibbing. They'll tangle tonight at Chisholm. That's in Sea Range action. Moose Lake will play, uh, Moose Lake Willow River will be at Barnum, and it'll be Albrook at Cherry in the St. Louis County Conference. Meanwhile, Proctor plays Cloquet, Evelyn Gilbert at Hermantown, Duluth East at Bemidji. In college football tomorrow, both Minnesota and Wisconsin have the weekend off. Locally, UW-Superior getting closer every game. We'll try to get that first win tomorrow when unpredictable UW-Stout invades Hogsford Field at 2 o'clock. UMD, meanwhile, opens NIC play over at Minnesota Morris. I don't know, but uh, they run the ball pretty well, and they play normally pretty solid defense, and, and uh, that's what we're going to contend with, and of course, again, we're on the road, and, and uh, when you're at home, it's so much nicer, mm -hmm. Marsh, but uh, they are, and they, of course, they're a you know, familiar opponent. They know us, and, and uh, they know what to expect and all that sort of stuff, so you don't fool anybody in the league, and it's just going to be a hard-nosed football game. Well, the season's come fast, and it's UMD Hockey Inter-Squad game at 7 p.m. Westman Arena tomorrow night. Among the new Bulldogs, freshman Chris Marinucci of Grand Rapids, his first priority is what? Oh, I guess i got to have high school way behind me now. I'm looking on. I'm hoping that I can work in my way into this team and become a productive part of it. What are some of your early impressions of the kids you've had on land training and so forth, first time on the ice? Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the players here? Well, they're a great bunch of guys. You know, they, they put some pressure on the rookies once in a while, but it, it's all fun and games. They don't really make money or nothing. But it's, it's all in good spirits and stuff. They treat you real well. You obviously could have picked the school you wanted to go to, judging by your past record. Uh, what were some of the factors that got you to Duluth? Well, I really like the staff. I like the kids, and I felt like, uh, like this is a place where I'd feel at home. Home. It's real close to home. My parents are easy. They can drive down for a game and stuff. And I just really like the atmosphere around here. As you look to play in college, and obviously you've talked to coaches and other players, uh, what do you see as the biggest thing you have to do? What uh, kind of uh, uh, changes and uh, how do you adapt? Uh, i got to believe the biggest step in the game is quickness now. And, uh, you know, the physical part, of course, is going to be there a lot stronger, guys. But I think it's really mostly quickness. There's, everybody out here is quick. In high school, you know, you had some guys that are big but slow. And here, even a big guy is fast. St. Scholastica Volleyball Team will host Dr. Dr. Martin Luther College at the Rife Center at 7 tonight. The ABC Raceway in Ashland holding the last stock car race of the area season tonight. The heats in the super stock, modified and late models, the semi-feature and the feature goes tomorrow night. Vinny Testaverde of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will see him Sunday at the Dome as the top-rated passer in the NFL. His coach Ray Perkins has a lot of respect for the Minnesota Viking defense. Uh, and their defense is, uh, I think, is, is so good because of their defensive line. The pressure they put on, uh, uh, not just passing game pressure, but running game pressure as well. Uh, but they've got real good players at every position throughout their football team. And, uh, you know, they're just a really fine team. They're one of the higher echelon teams and have been for the last five, six, seven years in the league. 
You'll see it here Sunday at noon. The Green Bay Packers play their first road game Sunday at the Detroit Silverdome. The Vikings are 10th overall on defense in the National Football League. The strange part is they are number one against the pass, but they're number 27 against the run, tied for last place with the Jets. That meeting between Commissioner Tagliabu and Pat uh, Patriots player Zeke Moat was postponed until the NFL makes a special counsel. And former NBA Commissioner Larry O'Brien dead today at the age of 73. And we will have the football story and the big pennant race baseball tonight. That's right. Okay. A lot of stuff going on. Okay. In fact, there are some other athletes hard at work this weekend here in the Twin Ports. That's the ice right. The ice skaters are going to be... Uh, Skating their hearts out tomorrow night, sponsored by KDLH TV. That's right, and also area uh, credit unions are helping co-sponsor the KDLH night tomorrow night. They're giving away free fanny packs to the first 1,200 early birds. So if you want to take in the ice capades tomorrow night mm -hmm. and get, get a free there early. fanny pack, <laughs> get there early. Before we go, though, the ultimate marine biology lesson on Lake Superior. We'll tell you about it after this. In the 80s, people were willing to pay extra for beers with wild animals on the label or beers with foreign names. They thought beers in clear bottles were better and worth more. They thought they knew beer. Today, people are learning the best beer isn't the most expensive, which makes Pabst Blue Ribbon seem like a new idea. A premium beer at a great price. Now you know too. If you don't know Pabst, you don't know beer. You probably think it's too early to start thinking about a new Arctic Cat snowmobile. Yep. Well, it's not. In fact, they're arriving at your dealer right now. And while you might want to wait until winter to ride them, it pays to buy your new Arctic Cat right now. Buy a new Arctic Cat now and get up to $300 in clothing and accessories free from participating Arctic Cat dealers. On the season premiere of Star Trek The Next Generation, you once knew him as Picard, captain of the Starship Enterprise. But now, he's half man, half machine, a deadly pawn of the evil Borg. His mission, to destroy Earth and anything or anyone who gets in his way. Don't miss the showdown of the 24th century on the season premiere of Star Trek The Next Generation. Saturday at 6 p.m. on KDLH-TV. Some Duluth High School students held their biology class on board a research tugboat today. The sophomores from Marshall School explored Lake Superior and the Superior Bay aboard the L.L. L. Smith Jr. The craft is owned by the University of Wisconsin and was chartered by the Marshall School as part of the special biology class. While aboard, students took water and fish samples to learn more about the lake ecology. The special class was sponsored by the school and teacher Larry Weber, and I bet they had a good day. Mm, coming into work, I was wondering what that tugboat was doing out there all by itself. A lot of fun. Yeah. Let's check in now with Colleen Burns for a look at some of the stories coming up on Late Edition. Colleen? Debbie and Darren, coming up tonight on Late Edition, we'll hear from National Guard officials in Duluth about the role the 109th unit will play in the Persian Gulf crisis. Minnesota's health commissioner is asking bar and liquor store owners to warn pregnant women about the dangers of drinking and smoking. And testimony has been heard in the federal court trial of two Chippewa Indians accused of illegally using migratory bird feathers. All right, thank you very much, Colleen. And thank you for watching. Join us for Late Edition at 10. We're inviting you to our grand opening at Clemson Lincoln Mercury. Now through Monday, we're having a ribbon cutting sale on every car, new or used. Extended hours all four days. Buy any car during the ribbon cutting sale and receive a Clemson Preferred Customer Card. Good for four years of free oil changes, plus other perks and discounts. Register to win a color TV from Clemson Lincoln Mercury at Clemson Auto Mall Duluth, a family tradition. Being the owner of a jewelry store specializing in affordable diamonds, I was anxious to tell folks that we are not a chain or a franchise, but a family jeweler dedicated to real values. I'm Larry Falter of LTD Jewelers in Superior's Mariner Mall, and I'm happy to tell you that advertising on KDLH TV proved to be the perfect choice. Day after day, new customers and even long distance phone calls prove that advertising on Channel 3 is truly effective. 
It's in the air. National Football League action. Grab NFL excitement right here on KDLH TV3 this season as CBS's top football analysts take you inside the huddle, the locker room, and through the league every week. Then let ICO Gas and Convenience Stores take you to the game. ICO will be giving away tickets for every Viking home game. Register today at any participating station where you see this bucket. Either way, you'll always win with NFL football on Channel 3 and free Viking tickets from the company that gives you more. ICO. KDLH TV Duluth. Hello and welcome to the Minnesota State Lottery's Daily Three Drawing. Here to witness tonight's drawing is the accounting firm of Laventhal and Horwath. The Minnesota State Lottery official tonight is Mary Ellen Hannon. Our first digit is one. And the second digit, six. Now the third digit, nine. Numbers drawn are not official until validated and certified. Tonight's daily three number for September 28th, 1990 is 169. Tomorrow night's Lotto Minnesota jackpot is estimated to be a record $28 million. Get your tickets today. Harvesting fall fruits and vegetables at just the right time makes all the difference in the world. So does buying a major appliance at just the right time. And this is it, the fall harvest of value sale at Doherty's. And the pickings are good. Take a look at the great Maytag appliances on sale at Doherty's. The washers and dryers, the rangers and dishwashers. And prices on Maytag start as low as $3.79. The fall harvest of value sale, it's on now, so don't miss it. At Doherty's, we're more than just low prices.